Well, if Enton's telling us this, it's got to be true, right? <laughs> we'll just see. I mean, he's de I definitely believe him over, um, what's her face? I don't even know what her name is anymore. That Banfield lady. <laughs> I've lost my voice. Oh, my gosh, it's crazy. Oh, what's he doing right there, Enton? Why are you squinting your eyes like that? Tell us a story. I think that uh, we may see this get moved to Ada County, which is Boise. We don't know for sure. It's going to be up to the Supreme Court, uh, Ashley, of Idaho. Uh, they're the ones who will have to make the decision. Uh, but the judge pretty much laid out that in Moscow, Idaho, Latah County, where we've seen all the courtroom uh, video from, it's very, very small. I've been there countless times. It's a small courtroom. You see the same couple of deputies every single time. There are very, very few deputies that work for the sheriff's office. There's only a couple of county clerks. Uh, and it's just not manageable, the judge says, for them to be able to handle a, a trial of this magnitude. Uh, so Ada County, Boise, Idaho, we had the Lori Vallow trial there. You remember, I've spent weeks and weeks and weeks there. It's a big judicial complex. It's a big courtroom. There's plenty of space. They've got the secret underground entrance for the jurors. Um, so I, it seems like that could, could make a lot of sense uh, based on the ruling. Well, that all sounds great, except if you're the family members of the victims who, you know, want to be there. Understandably, they want to stare Brian Koberger in the eye um, oh, all Jesus. through these proceedings. But it's like six hours away. You know, if you go to Ada County down in, in Boise, it's like six hours away from, I think they're in Kootenai County, which is way up north. Did, did they, were they consulted? Yeah. Did, did, they, did that weigh in at all to this? Look at that map. Look at, there's Lake Oh right my up gosh, there. I want to Putin's slap her right now. Um, it's a long drive. Yeah, it's far. Uh, and that's one of the big issues here. And you feel for the families because it's a three month trial, they think, Ashley. Three months. Imagine having to uproot your life. They have to rent a house. They have to be there for three months if they want to be there for the whole thing. So it's a long drive. They're very disappointed that the trial's being moved. Um, there's going to be a new judge, which I found to be a bombshell. I wasn't expecting it. The judge also said he wants off the case. That is something that the family is actually happy about. They were not pleased with the judge. They also <laughs> said today in a new statement, uh, Kaylee Gonzalez's family, that they um, haven't exactly been pleased with the prosecution. They feel like they haven't been fighting hard enough. They didn't fight this change of venue argument hard enough. They didn't fight hard enough to keep it in Moscow, Idaho. I spoke to the Gonzalez um, parents and also to their attorney just a short time ago. I want to I want to play you a little bit of that, Ashley. You said, you know, you got to be more aggressive. You guys have to be more aggressive. And they push back at us. And here we are two two months away. Why is it that Steve cannot make up his mind? Cannot make up his mind. He's one way, another way, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He's been dead set on the so, you know, a little bit more so lately. But it really makes me wonder what has changed his perspective like he like it has. Because it's really got me wondering. Like like if there's some reason why he's oh, forcing hand at this guilty verdict as well like he's he's you know i don't know there's something about this that doesn't feel right i mean it feels really wrong oh god that scared the shit out of me Whew, everything's scaring me tonight dang it or this morning i guess it is Whew, my heart's going again uh yeah something's not right here Do these families not want justice for their kids? That's... 
just can't even go there. Parents and also to their attorney just a short time ago. I want to I want to play you a little bit of that actually. You said you know you got to be more aggressive. You guys have to be more aggressive, and they push back at us. And here we are, two two months away from from two years, and they're resetting. So we were right. We told them they needed to be a little more aggressive, maybe a lot more aggressive, somewhere in the middle. And um, you know, here we are today, and uh, we're, we're we were right. And but. We can course correct. We can get this fixed. We can get the right guy in the right chair and we can go from there. This isn't the end. This isn't the end of the road. This is not over. Um, this isn't, a, you know, because I, I, I take it to heart like that's a win for them, you know, you know, and, and it's like tick for tack, tick for tack. But, um, you know, other people in the family have different mentalities than, than that. And, you know, they say, Mom, you got to look at the bigger picture. You got, you know, you can't. It can't. Have you guys thought about this? Okay, go back to the beginning and look at what the family, what they look like. Just their appearance, just in general, their appearance. I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just pointing out differences. And look how much different they look. Look how much healthier they look now. Same with the attorney. Their attorney, same way. Literally, they were puffed up. They looked unhealthy, in my opinion. And the attorney, big time. But same with, I mean, you know, even the hair has changed. The demeanor, everything. They're more confident. They're, um, come on. You serious? Oh, this is kind of freaking me out. This one especially. Especially. You said, you know, you got to be more aggressive. You guys have to be more aggressive. And they push back at us. And here we are two two months away from, from two years and they're resetting. So we were right. We told them they needed to be a little more aggressive, maybe a lot more aggressive, somewhere in the middle. And... Um, you know, here we are today, and uh, we're, we're, we were right. And But we can course correct. We can get this fixed. We can get the right guy in the right chair, and we can go from there. This isn't the end. This isn't the end of the road. This is not over. Um, this isn't, a, you know, because I, I, I take it to heart. Like, that's a win for them, you know? You know, and, and it's like tick for tack, tick for tack. But, um, you know, other people in the family have different mentalities than, than that. And, you know, they say, Mom, you got to look at the bigger picture. You got, you know, you can't, it, it's not tick for tack. It's not tick for tack. <laughs> so you can imagine, Ashley, um, how difficult it's been for them and for the other victims' family members to, to think that now there's going to be a whole new venue. They don't know where it is. And on top of that, there's going to be a whole new judge. Okay. Then I have this other question because last week we were talking about 13 filings that his defense attorneys put forth to Judge John Judge, you know, who's still presumably hanging on until a new judge is, is uh, appointed. Um, but what do we know about those filings? They want the death penalty off the table, and they suggested all sorts of things, from it's unconstitutional to, you know, the cruel and unusual punishment, et cetera. Where, where does that stand? Well, we don't really oh. know if Judge Judge is hanging on. I've been trying to figure it out. I was talking to Shannon Gray, the um, Gonzalez's at attorney, you know, there's a thought here, and it could happen that he's just done already, that the Supreme Court's going to decide, hopefully quickly, who the new judge will be, where this will move to, and the new judge will take over right away. And you mentioned this argument right now over the death penalty. The defense is trying to get it thrown out. Prosecution has to weigh in. There is a hearing set for November on that, Ashley, which is a big hearing. We all assumed that it was going to be in Moscow, Idaho likely not going to be in Moscow anymore, not going to be in front of Judge Judge. So is this going to delay things? Will that hearing still happen in November? Where will mm. the hearing be? I mean, you can understand the frustration with the families not, not really knowing. Yeah. I also heard um, Mrs. Gonzalez say something about they're going to get some, n some new help in the chair. And I'm not sure if she was referring to whatever new county comes along is going to help out with prosecution. I don't assume... 
how do they know so much in this case? I mean, how are they coming up with these things? How are they, you know, checking out you know, who, who's going to be in the jury pool? I mean, what's going on here? This is so... <laughs> so, um... This is like... I don't even know how to put this. Um, this is like, well, if, if any, if you, if you guys know what a fever dream is. So when you have a fever and here's what my fever dreams are. And these fever dreams are, it's like, it feels like you can't, you, it's like a running dream when you're running and you're trying to get away from something, but you can't. So my fever dreams are, one of them is, I'm only tell you one of them. I got a couple of them that I remember all the time because they come back all the time. But the one that scares me the most and is more suffocating than any other of them is where I'm um, under something. I can't tell what it is, but it's, it's suffocating. Like I can't breathe and it's really hot and I cannot breathe. There's no air coming through. There's no flow of air. And I'm crawling and trying to find my way out of somewhere. I don't even know where I'm at. And I finally get to my hand out like a corner of uh, out from underneath something. And I can feel it's, it's chill. Like it's actually a cool, cool air. And I finally get my head out and I, and I take roll over onto my back and take, take a breath. And as I'm looking up, there's this giant standing above me and they take their two fingers, their thumb and their, their pointer finger, and they reach down and they, pinch this quilt very small in their hand very large to me and pinch this quilt pick it up and then drop it right back on me where I'm in the middle of it again and I've got to crawl my way out that's how this feels to me like there's no end like there's always going to be someone somewhere who's going to cover up the story cover up what's really going on and make it look like like you can't see, like you can't figure out where it's coming from, like you like you just get a glimpse of it and then it goes away. And that's what like the people like I like I was talking with someone the other day. This girl, I was on the phone with someone talking about, and I was I had my earbuds in, and, and I was making an appointment, and. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. And I said, I'm sorry, I was just working on something like um, a video maker or something. She's like, oh, about what? And I said, you know, about the Idaho Four. And she's like, oh, really? She's like, my friend um, is going to school at Wazoo. And I'm like, really? I said, and, and I said, does she know? She's like, well, she's, yeah, she's, she was in this class. And I'm like, really? And I said, well, so what, is, what do you, what does she believe? What does everybody believe over there? And she's like, that he's guilty. And I'm like, what? And I said, well, why? And I started talking to her and they, she knew nothing of what I was talking about. She had no freaking clue. Anything that I was talking about, not a single freaking thing. I mean, it was like, it's so weird talking to people about that. They don't know anything about Linda Lane. They don't know anything about the grub truck. They don't know anything about the Banfield. They don't know anything about, you know, you know, Kara or Corey or, Farley's or Leonard or whatever, the whole shoot and shebang, sororities, frats, nothing. They don't know any of that. All they know is there was a sheath found that had DNA on it in this house underneath one of the victims that was brutally slain by this horrific monster of a person who studied. And the only reason he studied and got into that field is because he wanted to do this to people. That's what they've heard. If that's the case, then every single cop out there, every lawyer, every, you name it, anybody that's got anything to do with law, then you have to name them as being the same way because they all have to take those classes. Those are studies that they have, that they take in order to get their degree, their major and their diploma. You know, it's sick that they're like, how they've done this, how they've 
embedded. Like they've made this person a monster without him even being able to say a word. Like they're like, we don't know half of the stuff, like the things that they tell us, you know, he did this, he did that. He was, he was a drug. He did what we don't know. This does anybody have those records from any like clinic anywhere, any doctor? Is there receipts for that? We don't know if he rapped that song. We don't know if that's actually his. I mean, seriously. It's mind boggling to me that you can, that someone can turn a person's life upside down just like that. Just like that. This reminds me of a movie that scared the living crap out of me. And it's Sandra Bullock and it's called The Net. And it's, and she's, and she's a um, computer. I think she was a computer, did stuff on with um, IT and stuff. But she got her identity stolen and all, even everything that she knew, she could not, I mean, she couldn't keep ahead of this person that was doing this to her. And pretty, pretty soon people didn't believe it was her. They think she was like a thief and all this other stuff. And, and after a while, she had no money. She had no car because they came and repossessed her car. They did all this stuff to her. And she looked basically like she was homeless because she was running for her life. Because this person was trying to do away with her. And at that point, nobody believed her because she looked like she was crazy. And she probably felt a little crazy too. And that is just something that like I can feel that right now just talking about this. And put yourself in that position, knowing full well, let's just say he's like, let's just say, I mean, I don't know if he's innocent or guilty. I don't think he's guilty, but I don't know if he's innocent either. But put yourself in a position like that, where you're just all of a sudden taken, you know, he's going back to his family to, vit, to go for the holidays. He knows something's going on because he can feel it. There's something not right and he can feel it. And, and I would be like that too. I'd be able to feel what was going on around me. I would be able to know that for sure. And so I would probably be on edge big time and probably maybe even seem suspicious because of the way I was acting because I felt something, right? And so I'm going to be being cautious. Well, picture yourself that way and picture knowing, you know, you're just worried. I mean, oh my God, I can't believe this happened in this university, you know, next door to me and all this other stuff, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden they break into his home. They break down the door. They invade his home. They scare the shit out of his parents and his sisters if they were there and him. You know, probably grateful to be back home, getting a, getting a, you know, a good meal and all that good stuff, sleeping in his bed that he probably you know, had forever and was comfortable in and his, his room that he was, you know, he knew all, every single wall, everything that was on the walls, what was in the drawers. He knew, all, you know, it's like the back of your hand. Now think about them breaking in there and do and pulling you out of there like they did. And slapping four murders on your head and a, and, and a burglary or yeah, burglary. Think about that. Think about your whole life being ripped out from underneath you and you can't say a freaking word because you already know just from being there that this town is different from other towns. It's different from your town. It's not the same. You are an outsider and he studies this. This is something he probably knows just from studying it. What is going on in these brains? Because they've got, to, they've got to study all these different things. They don't just study, you know, I, I would hope not anyway, just the, you know, the typical things. I mean, they've got to study like mentality, majorities, um, different um, um, ratios of this and that, blah, 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 the whole works. Uh, it's like, and then you just know you are up against a town, but not just a town. You're up against a town and it's a university. And not only that one, but you're up against a town, it's university and it's sister university because of this university crumbles. So does the other one. So now you've got what feels like the world against you, which is what it turns out to be.
the world because of how they portrayed this in the beginning. I mean, for Christ's sakes, Fry came back and he literally said, not allegedly, not... <sighs> he said, we have the one who committed these crimes. Basically is what he said. Not verbatim, but that's what he said. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a yes to the people that he was talking to. Not we have, you know, arrested a person who we think might be involved. No, that's not what he said. He said, did this, committed the crimes, and everybody was on edge already. So when they arrested him. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, they got, the, they got the guy. Oh, thank God. So what they ran with that. Then comes freaking faceless in the, in the scene with the, with the crap that happened with that. And that just makes me so mad, that account. I, I think I'm the, I'm, in fact, I know I am. I'm the first one that brought that attempt to the attention of people. And I mean, it was brought out there um, about this video, but, the, but they didn't know. No one really knew where it came from. And so I don't even know how I happened upon it, but, but I also then happened upon the actual video with Faceless. And I mean, he's got so many different names with him talking to the guy, ta telling about what really happened and how that account really was born and all that other stuff. And people probably don't even know the whole story about that. But I saw a lot of lives before they were, t before they were taken down. Like there, you can't find these anywhere. They're not out there. And the guy that did that video with the truck when he was got the crowbar and he's the one doing the, um, th the hard, um, it's called LARPing, um, live action role play. And what they were doing for those videos is they were doing basically commercials. They were doing advertisement commercials, free advertising for goon tape. And goon tape is the stuff that they wrap around weapon handles and things like that because it's non-slip. And so that's what those commercials were for, was goon tape. Nothing else. That's what they were for. And the guy's name um, was War Bear that did that. The the guy in that in that um, little video, and he hasn't been able to get his YouTube channel. hasn't been able to get back in media because of this. This didn't just affect Brian being in jail. This affected this guy also. He was an actor. He did a bunch of stuff. He cannot. He hasn't been on the internet since. People came after him. They wanted to do him in. He ran. He got out of town. And this was another person that made up these accounts and targeted Warbear from the beginning. And then when Brian got the, when the name came in with Brian, the guy immediately switched it over to Brian being in the account and just kept Warbear's video up there and kept Faceless on there, tagged in Warbear because he knew who Warbear was. So they were mutual acquaintances or face or Instagram friends or whatever. So he just left it up there. All he did was change the, na the names. He left all war bear stuff up there. He just changed, put family members in there and, and the girl's names. He added to this account as being, as being, um, 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 tagged or friended or whatever you call it. I mean, really, that is how easy your life can be ripped freaking away from you and everybody's thoughts and in, in their heads can be changed to who you are can you fathom that that feeling of being so doomed and so hated that people want to see you die. And if you don't get that guilty verdict, they'll come in and do it themselves. Now, I challenge each and every one of you to put yourself in that person's shoes. Not even for as long as he's been there. Just do it for a day. Do it for a, 
an hour. Feel that hatred coming at you. Those daggers already slinging in your direction. Now give that man a give that man a what he deserves. He needs he needs a fair trial. Would you want to be put in that position? Would you want your kid to be put in that position? Your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, your grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, your friend. That's the case. I, I assume these prosecutors will move to a different county, period. Yeah, it's going to be the same prosecution, okay? It's, it's the Latah County prosecutors, and then they've got the help of the state attorney general's office. What she's talking about in the chair when she says we're going to get someone new in the chair, she's talking about the judge. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find oh, News Nation off. on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. Look how young I look.